miniature fiddlers of the world. I'm gonna do a lesson about fingering on the fiddle combined with string crossing. I'm just gonna show you some simple exercises that will help build your technique and your coordination for combining those two things so you can play kind of intricate tunes that do that. That one's called Drowsy Maggie. So, but these are some very simple short exercises that I'm going to give you that if you practice them and make them fun, you'll be able to easily pick up harder tunes. So the most basic thing you can do is first just practice string changing. I'm going to focus on going from D to A, but know that you, you could also practice G to D. Right now I'm just doing open strings. There's one basic exercise that I do with students that I call stop and rock to clean up the string change. You basically go down on D, full stop, rock it to A, and go up. Very meticulous, rock it back to D. And then after you've done that a while, you let go of that exercise and just make it flow. And then you go back and do it again. So I recommend practicing that. Maybe you already have. I, I teach some more basic bowing stuff in another video. Maybe you need to see that, but maybe you've already seen it or you already feel pretty good about your bowing. Um, and then also I recommend if you don't already know a D scale, then learn that, practice that, it'll help a lot with this video. So the basic, most basic exercise you can do to combine fingering, left hand fingering, and string crossing is this. We're going to go D to A, and first finger on D to A. Listen to it. Notice how I change the angle of the bow to change the string. So you, using that one simple exercise, we're going to build a whole bunch of creative exercises that will be fun because you'll be able to do them in different ways and add fun fiddly type things to them. Um, so here it is again. Now one thing you can do right off the bat to practice is holding the first finger down while you play the open A. So we're going to go open D, open A first, hold it down while you play the A. This is good. reason why you want to practice that? Well, maybe there'll be a situation where you need to do this. And you need, to, or something like it, and you need to keep that finger down, or just make it easier if you have to quit, play quick. So practice that again. Hold it down. Okay. So you may want to pause the video and do that a whole bunch. If you have a beat or a metronome, you can play it faster and slower. Slow is really good. It's harder than you think, though. Also, do that exercise on the other pairs of strings, G to D and A to E. In fact, I'm going to focus, like I said before, on D to A, but you can always do things G and D and A and E for this video. Um, so the next variation is very simple. Just two notes, double notes, but the same exercise. Slow. And then gradually speed it up. So on. 
Um, how about triplets? Let's do that rhythm. Notice the accent. Do ba do ba do ba. Ho down. Let's try ho down with the same simple little exercise. Okay, okay, so far so good. Another pattern you could do would be tucka. All right. Um, and now I want to show you a kind of more, like a drum pattern you can do with the same idea. So this, I showed this in an earlier video on bowing. Um, it's called paradiddle. So, basically we're going to do that, and then plant your first finger on D and do it. It's essentially the same exercise with a more complicated rhythm. Now I'm going to cycle them in a loop, and I'll just pause to say that looping based practice is the best thing you can do. If you do it at a comfortable tempo, because what happens is after a while you're going to not be thinking, you're just going to be flowing with the music and playing. And that's the goal, to just play. So I'm going to do that a little bit. Paradiddle, going open to one on D. So you can do a G to D. And an A to E. Alright, I'm going to give you one more similar type of rhythm. I just call it the polyrhythm. It's sort of an African rhythm. It sounds like this going from it starts on A and goes to D. That's the whole thing. Here it is cycled. Faster, you can kind of hear the polyrhythm part. All right, so we can use our simple little exercise with polyrhythm. First, have open D, and then put down your first. Oh, I did paradiddle. I messed up. Here's polyrhythm with it. Good, okay. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, since you can't ask them to me in this moment that I'm filming, put it in the comments field below and I will do my best to improve the video and get back to you with your question. Um, all right, a couple more things with this. We could really do this for hours, just this exercise, and you could become an amazing fiddler if you master all these things. Um, but I won't keep, your, keep you that long. The next thing we're going to do is going to go back to the simple one. But we're going to practice slurring across the string. So we're going to go down to A in one bow, then up. Great way to practice slurring across strings, which you'll need to know. Let's see, I think we can do this with the double note version. Pretty cool.
point out is that being able to hold down this finger and play the open A like that paves the way for doing double stops with fingers. I'm not going to talk about it in this lesson, but if you get good at it in these exercises, then you'll be able to do double stops pretty easily. Um, so, so far we've done hardly any fingering, just the first finger, but we've done all these cool things. Now we're going to extend this to some other fingerings. We're going to go one to two on the D string. So we're going to go with the double notes. Maybe you want to stop and pause and get that to sound good, sound in tune. The open A will function as sort of a reference point too. So if you get out of tune. The next thing we'll do is two to three. Second finger to third finger. Two, A. So one to two, two to three, and you can do it with all the patterns we did before. Rhythms and slurring across strings. Okay, and now we're going to, the next step is we're going to do a longer finger sequence. We're going to do half of the D scale. We're going to go open one, two, three on D and backwards with this string changing pattern. And that you can apply all the stuff I've already shown you to this longer sequence. That's paradiddle with it. How about slur across strings? So, so far so good. You may want to pause now and practice fingering on the D, string changing, and all these variations I've shown you. If you think you've got all that, then um, we're almost done. I'm going to now just suggest that you finger the A and do all the same tricks. So basically, open D to A, then open D to first on the A. triplets now. Remember you can do the do it from A to E and G to D. Um, how about polyrhythm? step is you can do all the fingerings on the A, so the upper half of the D scale. Then you can do the whole scale. Let's do the whole scale now, the whole kit and caboodle. stuff than I've shown you, but basically we're focusing on string changing and fingering to improve your technique. And uh, try to do it creatively. Try to do a fun little exercise that you can vary infinitely and just repeat hypnotically. Um, some suggested tunes you can do with this would be Drowsy Maggie. Another one would be um, uh, Harvest Home. Swallowtail Jig. It's another a lot of Irish tunes. Another Irish one, Tamlin. If you want to.
to practice this thing that we just did, string crossing fingering in a tune. Uh, I'm trying to think of some American tunes, I'm sure they're out there. If I remember any, I'll put them in the comments below. Well anyway, that was a pretty fun lesson. I enjoyed that and I hope you did too. Alright, bye, see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe, okay? Down at that red button down, down yonder. Thanks for watching the video. Excellent!